Mutiny on the Bounty. You may have heard of the 1935 Hollywood movie. Well, the South Pacific island of Pitcairn that gained fame from that flick is in the spotlight again. This time, though, for its disappearing population. I'm Ramey in a sense here for Asia Today. The Wall Street Journal's Daniel Stacy joins me with more from Sydney on this very interesting story that is now online. Now, Daniel, uh, Pitcairn has just 49 residents. So uh, why talk about this story now? Um, well, Remy, they've just done what's called a diaspora survey. They had this one hope that people who'd left the island over the decades might want to come back, and, and they, they went and found hundreds of these people and surveyed them. Now, it turns out that of the 33 people that were prepared to answer their survey, only three wanted to come back. So the diaspora survey, you know, disproved a theory that many on the island held that they just had to entice some people back and the population would grow again. Right, so all those people there, they don't necessarily want to go anywhere else. Now, who are these uh, people who have been there for the past uh, few, several decades? Well, there was a famous mutiny on the Bounty, um, an English Navy ship that was coming out uh, to Asia to try and cultivate breadfruit. Um, and its crew mutinied uh, they kicked the captain and a number of his um, supporters off the boat on a little life raft um, and then they sailed to Tahiti, uh, kidnapped a group of women uh, who they made their wives and then sailed out to Pitcan, which was a kind of a rumoured island at that point. This is 1790, so many of these areas were, were very barely mapped. Uh, they settled there, they burnt the bounty and sunk it to um, kind of get rid, rid of the evidence. Uh, and then they've been living there ever since. So the community is a mixture of uh, mutineers and Tahitian uh, ancestors. They have their own patois, which is a kind of a pit canner mix of um, old sailor speak and Tahitian language. Um, and they've been living in relative isolation now for, you know, over 200 years. Right, so uh, clearly immigration is the only way to try to get this population back up, but in your article you say, or someone says, that uh, most of the population, all 49 of them I suppose, are fairly xenophobic. So isn't that a bit self-defeating? Yeah, the editor of the local newspaper, Dem Tal, uh, made that statement, and I think the issue is that they have been a very cloistered society for a long time. They, they, uh, many of them admit to finding it difficult to, to um, accept outside immigration. And the diaspora survey is kind of about that. They, they had hoped to bring back other pit canners rather than bring in people from, you know, different backgrounds to the island. Um, but they had a, a really t a terrible sex abuse scandal ten years ago, which um, has exacerbated the, um, the sort of inability to bring people back. A lot of people are now ashamed of their pit canner heritage. These mm -hmm. are people who live in New Zealand and Australia mainly um, and, and won't identify in public as pit canners. So the likelihood that they're going to move back is, is you know, zero to, to nothing. All right. Now, uh, what's your take? Do you think uh, we should let pit Cairn go back to Mother Nature? I understand there's a survey that uh, by 2045, if nothing is done, there are only going to be, what, three people left on the rocky outcrop, right? Well, there'll be three left which are of working age, and the rest will be very old. Um, and there's a big question mark around who cares for these people, how they get medical uh, treatment when they're sick. Um, uh, the island is only accessible through longboats, which have to be hauled out of a, a giant shed. Um, and uh, you know, it, it's a questionable three people could even do that, so the island would no longer be accessible. Um, so, yeah, it really is facing extinction as a community. And I think um, ultimately a decision has to be made by the British government. This is one of their overseas territories as to how important this, this island is to them and if it's of any strategic use, because as a community, it, it, it really. Um, has been on life support for many decades and there's clearly no solution at this point. All right, such an interesting story. All right, the Wall Street Journal's Daniel Stacey giving us an eye on a, a part of the world that we don't often really go to, the rocky outcrop of Pitcairn. Thanks so much. For more on this, head to his Wall Street Journal article now online. I'm Ramey Asensio for Asia Today.